A colossal visitor has entered our solar system, 100 times bigger than the last interstellar anomaly, with a glowing tail wider than five full moons. Astronomers tracking 3i Atlas were blindsided when the Swan R2 object appeared on the same trajectory, its size and power unlike anything ever recorded. Both are set to vanish behind the sun simultaneously, triggering a global observation blackout and leaving every expert scrambling for answers. Is this a cosmic coincidence? An engineered encounter? Or the first move in a story far stranger than fiction? The race to unravel the secrets of 100 times bigger object Swan is aiming for 3i Atlas is about to begin. Avi Loeb stands at the center of the scientific storm swirling around Swan R2 and 3i Atlas. As a Harvard astrophysicist, Loeb is no stranger to controversy. But even by his standards, this moment is unprecedented. With telescopes across the globe locked onto the new arrivals, Loeb poses a question that splits the astronomy community down the middle. Are we witnessing a cosmic accident or the signature of intelligence on a scale beyond comprehension? He points to the trajectories first. 3i Atlas, discovered in July 2025 by the ATLAS survey in Chile, hurtled in from the direction of Sagittarius at nearly 58 kilometers per second, a speed that marks it as an interstellar wanderer, unbound to any star. Swan R2, on the other hand, entered the scene in September, flagged by the Swan instrument aboard SOHO, approaching from Aquarius. The odds of two such objects, from opposite corners of the sky, converging near the sun within weeks of each other, stretch the boundaries of probability. Loeb calls the timing impossible to ignore. His critics, armed with orbital charts and precedent, argue for coincidence. Peter Veres, a leading orbital analyst, traces their approach paths and insists the data show no shared origin. The mathematics, he says, support randomness. Two travelers, each shaped by the chaos of the galaxy, simply passing through. But Loeb is undeterred. He reminds colleagues that the same arguments were made about Aumuamua in 2017, and again with Borisov in 2019, only for each object to defy expectations in turn. The debate spills out of academic journals and into public forums. Some researchers lean into the extraordinary. Perhaps Swan R2 and 3i Atlas are not merely visitors, but components of a system a probe and its monitor, dispatched on intersecting missions. Others warn against abandoning Occam's razor, cautioning that the universe is vast enough to produce even the rarest alignments by chance. As the days tick down toward the solar conjunction, the stakes sharpen. Observatories scramble for every last minute of data before both objects slip into the sun's glare, their secrets hidden for weeks. Loeb presses for urgency, urging his peers to consider every possibility while the window remains open. The confrontation is not just between personalities or theories, but between competing visions of cosmic order, one rooted in statistical comfort, the other in a universe alive with purpose and design. The scientific world holds its breath, waiting for the sky to decide. October 14th, 2025. The countdown clock on every major observatory flashes red. In less than 48 hours, both 3i Atlas and Swan R2 will slip behind the sun's blinding glare, vanishing from every ground-based telescope on Earth. Astronomers call it solar conjunction, but in the control rooms, the mood is less clinical. It's a blackout. For three weeks, the most powerful optical and radio arrays on the planet will be useless. No images, no spectra, no real-time tracking. Only the sun's corona, a wall of plasma millions of kilometers thick, stands between humanity and whatever unfolds on the far side. The urgency is absolute. Teams at Mauna Kea, La Palma, Cerro Paranal, and the South African Astronomical Observatory are running round-the-clock shifts every last photon counts, data streams pour in, light curves, polarization maps, faint radio echoes, 
each one logged, timestamped, and rushed to global servers. The European Space Agency coordinates with NASA, JAXA, and amateur networks in a desperate push to capture the final moments. Even radio observatories, normally immune to daylight, are forced to stand down as solar interference drowns out any signal from the object's direction. The timetable is precise. At 1322 UTC on October 15th, Swan R2's elongation drops below 8 degrees, lost in the sun's haze. Three I Atlas follows just hours later, its own angle shrinking past the threshold for safe observation. For the next 21 days, neither object can be seen from Earth. The blackout is total. Not even the space-based SOHO and STEREO satellites can promise continuous coverage. Their instruments, designed to stare at the sun, struggle to track faint intruders against the solar wind. The Parker Solar Probe, racing through the inner heliosphere, is too close to the sun to offer a clear vantage. Coordination is frantic. Observatory directors trade encrypted messages, sharing last-minute calibration tweaks and target lists. The International Astronomical Union issues a global alert. All submitted data must be archived and cross-checked before the window slams shut. The stakes are clear. Any missed measurement could erase a clue. Any delay could mean losing the most extraordinary event in living memory. When the blackout begins, speculation will fill the void but no new evidence will arrive. The world will wait, blind, for whatever emerges from behind the sun's shield. Spectroscopic scans of 3i Atlas land like a shockwave across the lab. Analysts expected a dusty ice ball, but the spectral lines refuse to cooperate. Instead of the usual blend of iron and nickel, the readings show a startling purity. Nickel, almost unalloyed with iron below detection limits, no comet in the solar system matches this ratio. The composition hints at something refined, not forged in chaos, but selected, as if by design. The surprise deepens with the energy measurements. As Atlas approaches the sun, its coma brightens, but not in the way natural comets do. Lab teams at Cerro Paranal and Mauna Kea run the numbers again. The thermal output spikes far beyond what solar heating alone can explain. Instruments register a steady emission equivalent to 10 gigawatts, 50 times the power of Chernobyl at its peak. The data points to a core radiating energy, not just reflecting sunlight or venting gas. Some call it a reactor, others a power plant. The terminology is beside the point. What matters is the scale. The tail, too, refuses to behave. Instead of a diffuse plume, Atlas leaves a narrow, tightly collimated stream of carbon dioxide, as if directed by an engine rather than scattered by sunlight. The emission profile holds steady, hour after hour, resisting the usual fluctuations caused by solar wind or outgassing. Analysts in Tokyo and Pasadena debate whether this is evidence of controlled propulsion or an exotic, natural process never seen before. Microscopic analysis of coma dust returns more puzzles. Grains sampled by remote spectrometers show crystalline structures and trace metals that resemble industrial alloys, not the rough primitive aggregates expected from interstellar debris. Some grains are laced with vanadium and chromium in ratios that echo terrestrial metallurgy. The findings are quietly circulated among a handful of researchers each more unsettled than the last. The consensus fractures. Some insist on a natural explanation, perhaps a fragment from a differentiated planetesimal, stripped of its iron core by an ancient collision. But the energy signature remains. 10 gigawatts, persistent and unwavering, pulsing from a body less than a kilometer wide. The numbers do not fit any known cometary model. The idea takes hold. Atlas is not just a visitor. It is a probe, engineered for endurance and power, built to survive the journey between stars. And if Atlas is the scout, what will its counterpart bring? Swan R2 is not a probe. It's a fortress. The first hard numbers are staggering. Its core output, measured at over 10,000 gigawatts, 
dwarfs anything nature produces in the solar system. That's more than all the world's power plants combined, multiplied by a thousand. Every second, Swan's core radiates enough energy to vaporize a city, yet the object remains stable, its structure unbroken as it hurtles toward the sun. Wrapped around this power source is a barrier unlike any cometary coma. Spectrographs from La Palma and Cerro Paranal isolate a shell of ionized gas, plasma, not dust, sculpted into a perfect envelope. The readings are precise. The plasma shield is nearly 6,000 kilometers thick at its densest point, repelling the solar wind and deflecting charged particles with a regularity that no natural process can explain. Solar physicists compare it to the magnetic armor of Jupiter, but on a scale and symmetry that suggests engineering, not accident. The tail stretching across five full moons in the night sky is not a diffuse haze, but a luminous, sharply defined stream. Instruments detect a narrow band of charged carbon and oxygen ions, accelerated to speeds that match the solar wind itself. The emission remains steady, hour after hour, as if regulated by an internal clock. Attempts to model the outflow as simple sublimation fail, the numbers only fit if the core is actively driving material outward, like a controlled exhaust, not a random venting of heat. Inside the plasma envelope, the core's spectrum reveals a signature that stops researchers cold. It's not just nickel. There are traces of cobalt, vanadium, and chromium in ratios that match high-grade terrestrial alloys. No natural comet, no asteroid, no planetary fragment carries this blend. The metals are not scattered or mixed, but layered, as if deposited with purpose. Some call it a hull, others a shell, but the implication is the same. This is not a relic of chaos, but the product of order. As Swan R2 nears the sun, the shield brightens, responding to solar flare activity in real time. Each spike in solar wind pressure is met with a surge in plasma density, as if the object is aware, adapting, defending itself against the star's assault. The core output rises in tandem, peaking above 12,000 gigawatts as perihelion approaches. No comet in recorded history has survived such conditions, let alone thrived. Swan R2 is not just passing through, it's enduring, powered by something far beyond chemical or solar energy. The numbers, the metals, the shield, the tail, each detail points to a scale and intent that eclipses the wildest theories about 3i Atlas. If Atlas was the advanced scout, Swan R2 is the fortress built to withstand the sun itself. And as the blackout begins, with both objects lost behind the solar glare, the world is left to wonder what kind of force could build a machine to challenge a star. The orbit of Swan R2 stretches farther than any comet in living memory, more than 22,000 years between visits. That number is not just a calculation, it's a shadow cast across the ancient world. Archaeologists like Graham Hancock have spent decades tracing these cycles, searching for echoes of cosmic events in the oldest monuments on Earth. The Great Pyramid's star shafts, precisely angled toward Orion's belt, and Sirius as they appeared 12,000 years ago, may be more than symbolic. Some researchers propose these alignments are not mere coincidence, but messages carved in stone meant to survive the turning of ages. The last time Swan R2 swept through the inner solar system, glaciers still covered much of the northern hemisphere. Humanity was just beginning to settle, to build, to record the sky. Monuments rose at Gobekli Tepe, Gubekli Tepe, their pillars etched with animals and stars, as if warning of cycles longer than any dynasty. The 22,554-year interval appears in ancient calendars, hidden in the long count, whispered in the myth of world ages. Each time the cycle completes, the world changes, ice recedes, oceans rise, civilizations awaken or vanish, leaving only stone and silence behind. For Hancock, 
these patterns are not accidents. He suggests the architects of the pyramids, the builders of megalithic sites, encoded their knowledge of the heavens for those who would come after. If Swan Artu's path is written in the sky, it is also written in the bones of our oldest ruins. The cycle returns, and with it, a question. Did our ancestors witness this visitor before and try to warn us across the gulf of time? Since the first radio pulse leapt from Earth's surface in 1895, Humanity has been broadcasting its presence to the cosmos. TV, radar, deep space probes, and the relentless hum of the internet. In 2017, astronomers at the SETI Institute aimed a tight beam transmission at Oumuamua, Oumuamua, hoping for a reply. No answer came, at least not one recognized. Now, as Swan R2 and 3I Atlas vanish behind the sun, the question hangs in the static. Have we triggered a response or merely caught the universe's attention at the wrong moment? Anonymous voices in the SETI community whisper about patterns in the noise. Some claim that encrypted packets embedded in the radio spectrum have been flagged by automated filters, then quietly scrubbed from public archives. A handful of NASA web pages tracking the trajectories of these objects have gone offline without explanation. Forums light up with screenshots and rumors, missing data, broken links, and redacted bulletins. The official channels offer only silence, fueling suspicion that something vital is being kept from view. Three possibilities take root. Are these objects part of an ancient surveillance cycle, returning on a schedule older than civilization? Are they here for routine maintenance, cosmic janitors tending to the machinery of the solar system? Or is this a direct answer to our broadcasts, a reply to our cosmic shout? The evidence is incomplete, the motives unknown, and the stakes potentially existential. In the end, the story turns on you. Every theory, every fragment of data, every unexplained gap is an invitation to decide. What do you believe is happening above our heads right now? In July 2025, astronomers recorded the entry of interstellar comet 3Y-Atlas, tracked at 4.5 astronomical units from the Sun by the Atlas Telescope in Chile. The documentary has presented expert debates, technical data, and historical comparisons tied to claims of a second, much larger object, Swan R2, allegedly 100 times the size of Atlas and possessing unprecedented energy signatures. While some sources cite nickel-rich composition and gigawatt-scale emissions, no peer-reviewed data or official releases confirm these extraordinary properties. The lack of public statements from major space agencies about a simultaneous solar occultation or a 22,554-year orbital cycle leaves significant questions unanswered. What is clear, the global scientific community remains alert to new interstellar objects, and archival records show how quickly fact and speculation can blur. As observations continue and more data is released, the true nature of these cosmic visitors and their place in our history remains an open file waiting for verified answers.